Nerdy Nerdigans, this is the one and only Packer Girl 89 of Nerdigans Inc. And today's manga Nerdigan live reaction video is going to be for Kaguya-sama Love is War chapter 270. So before I get into this recap and live reaction, let me just remind you to hit that like, share, and subscribe buttons. And because of course this channel, let alone this video, are not sponsored. And <sighs> I am just praying to the freaking gods that next month me and Kitty aren't going to be homeless and sleeping on the street. Yeah, that is my reality at the moment. It fucking sucks. Ugh. But, but, but if you love what we're doing and want to help keep this operation alive and kicking, so we can keep bringing you more anime and manga content, whether it be news, analysis, deep dives, or live reactions like this one, feel free to hit up our Cash App and PayPal. Links are in the description box below. So. This manga is slowly coming to an end. It is. And I'm really hoping that we're setting up a sequel. I really am. Because a couple of weeks ago, we had the passing of the torch with uh, um, Miyuki and Ino. And then we had our moment this past week with uh, um, Ishigami and Kaguya, which was really goddamn cute. But anyways... Let's get to uh, this chapter, see what's in store for us this week. All right, let's see what we got here. And this chapter is titled uh, Everyday Life Part 3. And there's Eno. Speaking of Eno. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, actually, she's thinking about what Ishigami said. Actually, I'll be taking um, the summer to do a homestay in Switzerland. What? Why? <laughs> it's called Minecraft. Hey, you know what this makes you think of? South Park fans, you know what you know what this should make you think of? Heroin hero. <laughs> this is like this is the alcohol version of heroin hero. And this is. Tell me I'm wrong. That is the first thing I thought of. I don't have wine on me, but. This, this is for the winos, man. Yo, what's up, Mika-chan? Ah, Tarapa-senpai, hello. Um, you farming wood right now? Want to use my enchanted axe? Um, no, I couldn't possibly. Nah, I'll be just fine with my iron axe. I really don't mind, you know. Where's the wine? This is Winecraft. This is Winecraft. Where is the wine? You know, I feel like you're always holding yourself back, but it's just a game, so why not have some fun and be a bit more shameless? This is why you've never managed to get close to Ishigami even after all this time. Ishigami? How do you know about- Oh, that sounds interesting. Kurama-chan! Uh-oh. You guys talking about love? Let me join too! We're not talking about anything! Oh, no need to be embarrassed about it. Oh, come on, spill the tea! You know what? It's a good thing I got my Diet Pepsi off of this. I was thinking about not doing that, but... <laughs> I'm glad I did now! Woo! I've always took you for the straight lace serious type, but turns out even you're interested in this kind of stuff, huh? Ah, I see Ishigami, huh? Seems pretty good to me, <laughs> to be honest. I tell you, it's not like that. It's not like I actually like Ishigami or anything. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be pretty hard to talk about this kind of thing with us Aragi san So, well, yeah. <laughs> She knows. She knows. So right now, you're just looking for someone to talk to about it, aren't you? Huh? How do you know about that? You're in the same class as Kazoe uh, Makihara, aren't you? Uh, you know, from the TG Club? That girl's EQ score is about as high as humanly possible. Um, so she naturally has a pretty good sense of everyone's interpersonal relationships. Anyways, Maki Chana mentioned it, mentioned it to us before, so I figured she might have been on to something. Was she right? Oh, damn, woman! What the heck? That's terrifying. Right? Everyone around her felt the same way, so she had some pretty deep trust issues for a while. I do not blame, <laughs> don't blame everyone around trust issues. She was a pretty, nut, a pretty tough nut to crack back then, you know. I had no idea. 
ever since she joined the TG Club, uh, she's really brightened up. In the end, that's just the power of gangs. Where's the wine? Why isn't there wine in this game? Uh, I'm very annoyed that there is no wine in this game. In fact, why don't you just go play some games with the Shigami Cut? Just team up, team with him and play a few matches. I'm sure you'll get closer with him in no time. But the other day I watched um, one of the clips he Shigami uploaded. And to be honest, he's on a totally different level from me. If I team up with him, if, sorry, if I team with him, I feel like I'd just be in his way. Ah, the better you get at, uh, get in the game, the more you understand the gap between you and uh, top players. A uh, pretty relatable experience for all gamers. Yeah. That's why I wait to. Uh, that's why I want to wait until I fail to get closer to his level first. Personally, I think that's a pretty commendable goal. But just how many years are you planning to wait then? That is a good point. Ishigami Ken has been playing FPS games for around ten years now. I know you've been spending a few hours in the lab every day practicing your aim. But even with that, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. As a member of a pro gaming team, with your current experience, a mother so. Dedicated training isn't nearly enough. There's no way you could catch up to him. So let's think about this another way. There's no reason for you to feel bad about being below his level. You see, with games, teaching new players um, how to play is all just about... Oh my god. Let me read this again. Sorry. See, uh, you see with... Um, you see, with games, teaching new players how to play is all just part of the fun. It is. But... You know, my mind went down the gutter. Teaching, I, I, I don't teach. Nah, I don't teach. I'm gonna learn. I'm not teaching anybody shit. You teaching me. I ain't teaching anybody shit. But when it comes to FPS, that ain't happening. I've tried, I do not like FPS. I have tried with FPS and I've tried with third player shooters too. That's just not my thing and ain't gonna change. Deal with it. Is that really true? You've never really played um, games with other people up until now, have you? Now that you've tried it, what do you think? Up till now, I've always thought that games were something you play alone. Well, unless it's Super Smash Brothers or like Mario Kart or something. I like, here's the thing. I like playing, um... I like playing JRPGs, and I like playing solo JRPGs, because I want to feel that experience. I want the full experience, and I feel like you don't get that unless you play, like, play the story mode alone. That's, that's my thing. That's how I've always gone about it. But certain games, like, they're, like, Super Smash Brothers, as I said, it's more fun when you play in a group. But, like, I don't under- I, I feel so old saying this right now. But, like, with a lot of the new games coming out, I just don't understand it. I don't. I don't understand why everyone is so focused on the online multiplayer and not on the story. It's just the weirdest thing to me. Because that's what I get a game for. I want to play, like, the actual story. I want to play with the actual characters. I want to play with the, you know, I want to play what... The, um, I want to see what the developer intended with the story, with the characters, get to know everything about it. I don't give a shit about the multi the online multiplayer. I don't give a shit about that. I just want to actually play the game and enjoy the experience. But anyways. Up until now, I'd always thought that games were something you play alone. But when I play with everyone here, even the dumbest games start to feel fun. My point was just proven! The dumbest games start to feel fun! Well, yeah, that's the idea! And that's why more shitty games come out, is because people want to play mul online multiplayer. They're focusing on online multiplayer so much that even du uh, that the games are getting dumber and dumber. Right, Kitty? Right, Keys? Yeah, now you're just ignoring me. Ugh. Like, I'll meet someone here who, um, I don't mesh, uh, who I don't think I'll mesh well with. Oh my god, fucking A-Cat, you distracted me. I lost my groove because of you. Like, I'll meet someone here who I don't think I'll mesh with, but once I start gaming with them, I'll get, I'll get caught up in the game. And before I know it, we're getting along. Well, that's until you have a little kid screaming in your headset and cussing you out. 
Yeah, Microsoft, you folks, it's too late for you, Microsoft. You are doing, taking care of something that you should have taken care of 10 years ago. At least 10 years ago. Yeah, this was a problem back in like 2008. I want to do this now. If you don't believe me, go look it up on YouTube. It's a really weird feeling, right? R right, right? Games are a really special thing. Well, they are special until, uh, well, online multiplayer is really special until you have some prick. Some prick 10 year old in your rated M game fucking with the, um, fucking with the, the voice chat and squeaking in your goddamn ear. It's like, fuck, you ruined it. You ruined the moment. I know because Brian used to play online multiplayer and I had to deal with it with him. They can bring people together. They can be a tool to make everything more fun. They can be an ideal world for everyone. Again, until like a 10 year old ruins it. Parents, if you are not monitoring your 10 year old, please, please go do it. Make sure your 10 year old is not ruining the online experience for everyone. That's why I created the uh, TG Club. Chika-chan plays games with everyone in the student council too, doesn't she? I'm sure that's because she wants everyone to enjoy the time they have together. In the end, <laughs> it's so fucking, the games she does are so fucking stupid, but <laughs> the point has been made. In the end, it doesn't matter who wins and loses. She just wants to get everyone to come together and have fun with each other. Yep, come together and have fun with each other. You see, we humans are an interesting species. Yeah, <laughs> we are an interesting and stupid species. Well, interesting species because you never know how stupid we get. Yeah. Leave us alone and we'll naturally drift away from each other over time. Just a small change in our surroundings is enough for us to lose contact with each other. This is very true. That's why we have to keep putting in the work to keep those, uh, those ties intact. But now we live in, the, in a new era where a single fiber optic cable is enough to keep us connected. That is very true. Whether it be Switzerland or America, as long as you have the courage to reach out, it doesn't even take a second. That is very true. But there's also, but that single fiber optic cable can destroy a person's life. The power of stupidity, man. But still, Ishigami's in the middle of his study abroad trip. <laughs> Don't underestimate, uh, don't underestimate just how much a gamer loves his games. Yeah. An addict is still an addict. They will find a way. Hmm? Well, yeah, I brought a gaming laptop with me. Why? Oh, hell yeah, I'm down for a game. Uh, we playing pubs? Uh, I'm down for rank two. Yay! I love us are too far apart to play rank together, but I'll still be counting on you to carry me hard. Uh, you got it. Ooh. Wait, what was the Eno? What? Wait, 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 Naughty, naughty girl! <laughs> I'm telling you! Akka is setting shit up for a sequel! Like, the writing is on the goddamn wall! The writing does not lie! Because until we- until I see Sexy Time, a sequel is coming. And the thing is, though, with, with how Akka does relationships in this manga, it's like a nice slow build up until it feels like a satis uh, until it feels satisfied until when it happens. Here, that's what's going on here. It really is. This really feels like a nice slow build up because that's what happens with relationships. This is how a relationship happens. It's just little things like this. And I really, really appreciate it. I really am hoping that I'm right and that Akka is setting things up for a sequel. Because, um, sequel slash spinoff. But yeah, this really feels like a sequel is coming. It really does. I mean, between the passing of the guard going on with, uh, uh, with, uh, um, uh, uh, Miyuki to Eno and, 
Kaguya, Ishigami, and let's be real, Ishigami does give you that, like, clueless Kaguya kind of thing. Yeah, he does. It really feels like the passing of the, it really feels like a sequel is coming. It really does. And I know how some people don't think that Ino and Ishigami can carry a sequel. That's a load of bullshit. If you do not believe that Ino and Ishigami can carry a sequel, you're full of shit. This freaking ship is everything. I'm trying not to be biased. But this, but I know a lot of people have said this too. And agree with me in the comment section. But between Ishigino and, um... Yugiya, like this relationship, I, and I've said, and I've said this several times. <laughs> like once it happens, it's going to feel so satisfying. It feels like it will be more satisfying than Miyuki and Kaguya's relationship. It really will because of how it's been set up. Because we saw with, with between the backstory with uh, um, Ishigami and Ino of how you know, they, of how it was going to happen and then how it just fell apart. And now how they are like kind of reunite, you know, they're rekindling things. It's just, and then you had the whole thing with uh, uh, Ishigami getting with someone else and he's learning about um, the difference between um, infatuation and love, like, you know, experiencing it. It's like a trial and error kind of thing. It's just so interesting. It is. And this and how it's um, being executed is really how relationships work in real life. It really is. It's a trial and error kind of thing. You have to, especially when you're in high school. Because you don't know, you're kind of experimenting to try and figure out what is love. Miyuki and Kaguya, that shit is love, period. They... That is love. They were trying to figure it out, too, in their own way. Yeah. But that was love, period. Ishigami and Ino's relationship, yeah, there's that falling out that's uh, that's kind of unrealistic to an extent. But at the same time, you could have that where it's like you have a falling out and you drift apart for a minute and then you come back together. That is kind of realistic in a way. It does happen. It's rare, but it does happen. But I really like this. I really do. Because the, you know, and Ishigami's relationship in terms of like how they're, um, you know, getting to know each other via gaming and all this. This is something that happens a lot more often than you think. And I really, really like it a lot. I really hope that this is going to be a sequel. Please, Akka, please tell me we're going to get a sequel. And I do not mind that Fujiwara going to be part of this. Nah, Fujiwara, Fujiwara and Kagi are going to still be in there. And we'd still get to see, in the sequel, this is a picture in my head. Obviously, Kagi is still going to be there. Fujiwara is still going to be there. Kaguya is still going to come in and out and, like, you know, do her thing with Miyuki. And then Fujiwara is still going to cause her shenanigans. And we're going to see them graduate. If we see them graduate, no, because Miyuki graduated early. I think Kaguya might graduate. If Kaguya graduates early as well, then yeah, I wouldn't be surprised uh, by the end of this manga if Kaguya graduates early. I wouldn't mind that, actually. If, if we see the end of this manga, like Kaguya graduates, and same with Fujiwara. If they graduate, then that's a whole different thing. But I'm really curious what you guys think. Do you guys think that Akka is seriously setting up a sequel? That's what I feel like is going on here. It really feels like Akka is setting up the sequel for Ino and Ishigami's story. It really feels like it. It feels like that. that's what's going on. And I'm not mad. I'm happy about that. I really want Ino and Ishigami, I really want Ishigino to have their own story. They deserve their own story. I'm very curious what you guys think. And as I said, Kaguya and, and, and the sequel, like, Kaguya and Yuki can have, like, their cameos and shit. And Fujiwara could still have her cameos and shit. I don't give a shit if you, you want to do that, Akka. But I just really want um, 
you know, to have, you know, give advice and stuff like that. But I just want Ishigino to have their story told. They deserve it. They do, especially with everything that we got so far in this manga, considering the struggles that they've been through. They deserve to have their story told. They do. I'm very curious what you guys think. What do you guys think of this chapter? Does this chapter kind of like kind of solidify that Akka is set, setting up a sequel? It really, to me, it does. I roll, Maybe I'm delusional. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigans Inc. Love what we're doing. I want to help keep this channel alive and kick in so I can see at least see Kaguya through to the end. Oh, God, I hope I'm not homeless next month. A few ways you could do that. Donate to our Cash App, PayPal, Patreon, purchase something off our Amazon wish list. All is in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, find us on PlayStation Network. That's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.